Back with another log trig integral today, and this one contains the logarithms of both the sine and the cosine of x, and we've thrown in a denominator of tangent x as well. And here the solution development is going to be really elegant, and I hope you're going to enjoy the ride. So first up, we're going to call our integral i, as always, so we have something to refer to. And we're going to expand the tangent here. The reciprocal of the tangent is the cotangent of x, which can be written as the cosine of x divided by the sine of x. So we can write i as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log sine x times log cosine x times the cosine of x divided by sine x dx. Next up, I'd like to perform a substitution here where we let the sine of x equal u. Now this implies that the cosine of x dx equals du. Now what about the actual cosine of x, this term here? Well, for x between 0 and pi by 2, the cosine of x equals the positive square root of 1 minus the square of the sine of x. So this implies that we can write uh, our integral i in the u world as the integral from 0 to, wait, let's check the limits of integration. As x approaches 0, sine of 0 is 0, so u approaches 0 as well. And as x approaches pi by 2, u approaches sine pi by 2, which is 1, of course. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of log u times log square root of 1 minus u squared divided by u and this cosine of x dx term is the differential element in the u world. And using the properties of the natural logarithm, instead of writing this as log 1 minus u squared to the 1 half, we can write this exponent as a coefficient of the logarithmic term and that's just a constant so we can take it outside the integration operator and we have one half of the integral from 0 to 1 of log u times the logarithm of 1 minus u squared divided by u du. So we have this really fascinating structure in front of us involving the product of a couple of logarithmic functions of u and viewers of the channel know that I love using infinite series expansions and the series expansion I want to employ here involves this function here, the natural logarithm of 1 minus u squared. Now, the logarithm of 1 by 1 minus u has a pretty useful infinite series expansion as the sum over the positive integers k of u to the k divided by k, provided that the absolute value of u is less than 1. And if the absolute value of u is less than 1, then so is the absolute value of u squared. And this condition is satisfied on our interval. So this implies that the logarithm of 1 by 1 minus u squared equals the sum over the positive integers k of u to the 2k divided by k. And using the properties of the logarithm, all we have to do is reciprocate the argument, and then that introduces an extra negative sign. So we have the series expansion for this term here, the logarithm of 1 minus u squared, and this equals the negative of the sum over the positive integers k of u to the 2k divided by k. So using this equation, we can write our integral i as 1 half of the integral from 0 to 1 of log u divided by u times the sum over the positive integers k, and you have this extra negative sign, so let's just pop that out. The sum over k of u to the 2k divided by k dx. And because this log u divided by u term is independent of the k variable, we can slip it inside the summation operator. So you have negative 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k of u to the 2k times log u divided by u du. And, oh, we have this k term as well in the denominator. And we have some nice cancellation taking place as well. So we can write this as u to the 2k minus 1 times log u divided by k. And if we switch up the order of the summation and the integration operators, we have a pretty nice structure here. We have the sum over k 
of the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the 2k minus 1 times log u divided by k du. And because this k variable here is independent of the u variable with respect to which we're integrating, we can slip it outside the integration operator. So this implies that i equals negative 1 half times the sum over k of 1 by k times the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the 2k minus 1 times log u du. Now all this integral structure needs here is some integration by parts. So we're differentiating the log term and we're integrating this u to the 2k minus 1 term. So on differentiation we get 1 by u and on integration we get u to the 2k divided by 2k. And of course we have this diagonal, the alternating positive and negative signs. So, this implies that i equals negative one-half times the sum over k of 1 by k times uh, u to the 2k times log u divided by 2k with the limits being 0 and 1 minus 1 by 2k times the integral from 0 to 1 and u to the 2k divided by u which of course gives us u to the 2k minus 1 du. Okay, cool. So this is pretty easy to evaluate. You can verify using L'Hopital's rule that in the limit as u approaches 0, u to the 2k times log u approaches 0. And as u approaches 1, this logarithm term goes to 0 as well. So this entire thing evaluates to 0. And this implies that i equals, now you have two negative signs being cancelled out quite nicely. So i equals one half of the sum over k of 1 by k uh, times this 1 by 2k term. So you can take the 2 outside and you have 1 by k squared now. And 1 by 4 and this is being multiplied by the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the 2k minus 1 du which is again quite trivial to evaluate so we have 1 fourth of the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k squared times u to the 2k divided by 2k with the limits being 0 and 1 and as x approaches 0 we get a 0 anyway so we're left with 1 fourth of the sum over k of 1 by 2k cubed and again we can factor out we can take out this 2 uh, we can factor out this 2 here and write this as 1 by 8 and we're left with 1 eighth of the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k cubed which is of course the Raymond zeta function evaluated at 3 also known as Apery's constant and that's the result of our evaluation of the integral. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you, see you next time.